Hello and welcome to this edition of Talking Subs, hosted by Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful. In this episode, we're going to be talking to two councillors about what is going on in their council area, looking at all things single-use plastic. And to go through this really interesting topic, we have councillor Nicholas Trimble, who is from Lisburn City and Castle Ray Borough Council. And we have councillor Karen Douglas, who is from Arts and North Down Council. You're both very, very welcome. Um, I'm going to start off with you first, Nicholas. How did you become aware of this issue of you know single-use plastic and you know um uh issues like that you know what this isn't going to paint me in a very good light but to be perfectly honest it's whenever the uh the the the, the fast food places that i enjoy started introducing paper straws instead of plastic straws uh, i mean it's uh, you know, I'm, like, you're seeing lots of little measures that lots of places are doing like that and that i think is really um what, what, what's promoted in the popular psyche that actually these things that you know you know 10 20 years ago that were absolutely commonplace were actually realizing uh, these these cumulatively have a huge impact on the environment but yeah uh, embarrassingly for me it probably was the the, the straws uh, that, that I saw was when it sort of it, 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 it crystallized in my mind oh this is actually a thing so there you okay go. great Brilliant and uh, and no shame in in that. I suspect for a few of us have actually become aware of it uh, through through that route. Uh, Karen, what about you? Um, uh, when did you for when when did the problem of single use plastics really come into your uh, uh, attention? Really back um, about six years ago, I joined the um, beach cleaners group for Arts and North Down, and uh, on my first beach clean. I was really quite aghast just with the amount of um, plastic bottles and single use items that were left lying along the coastline, the beach, whatever. Um, and really got into that group, we started then meeting on a, a monthly basis and it really just has grown from there, just the sheer amount of plastic and items that are being dropped either by people on purpose or not being disposed of or flushed down toilets or washed back up um, through the seas and our water courses. So I became aware of the problem at that point and then started having discussions with other people who were really interested in the environment and thinking, you know, what could we be doing as council? How can we start to address these issues about what do we consume? How do we um, produce? How do we manufacture? What are our expectations? And how could council maybe as a lead stakeholder, take a lead and influence some of the, the policies and behaviours. Yeah, and Nicholas, uh, Karen has actually um, uh, dovetailed very nicely into my next question. I mean, for you as a, as a local councillor, how important are councils in actually being part of this uh, drive to tackle single-use plastics? You know, what is it you're seeing from, from, from the Lisburn and Castle Ray perspective on that? Well, I would say, like, in the general sense, councils are probably on that front line in terms of, you know, the local delivery and what your local impact is, you know, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm zooming in, I'm, I'm up in Stormont today, but, you know, Stormont uh, it sits up here and, and what it does, the, the actual, uh, w what hits the ground in your local area comes through the council. So, I mean, any any uh, events, any services provided in your area that the council has an, an impact on, you know, that that's, um, they, they're, they're right there, I suppose, in how much of an impact that they have. I mean, I'm just thinking, for example, like uh, your your leisure centres, you, you've you got your, your, your consuming of products, whether it's your, your cafeterias or your vendor machines there, your events that are put on in your public parks, that sort of thing. And then obviously your, your, your council buildings that people in, in, in times when COVID permits you come into and use for, for various functions, you know, so, uh, and then of course, like you've, you've also the, the fact that local business and local charity sectors engage through council and are, you know, associate themselves either through funding or through initiatives in some way or another. And council, although you're maybe not leading on something like that, you have an ability to steer, uh, you know, from how you lay things out at the start. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Karen, you, you were talking there a wee bit about how you became aware of it there, but just in, in terms of arts and North Down Council, what is it that you're seeing in, uh, in your local area in terms of tackling single-use plastics? And again, how important do you think the council level, uh, local government is in terms of actually dealing with that? 
I think hugely influential. I think we have a really important role to play. I know that um, a lot of our initiatives really started back in 2017 when, you know, two councillors brought forward a notice of motion to, you know, um, end the reliance on single use plastics within council itself. So taking a lead as a huge organisational body and it launched the campaign for stand for sustainability. So basic things that we were doing, even as employees and as councillors, we all had to make a pledge and to do one more thing. So rather than, you know, um, bringing in bottles of water, which is going to the tap and using a cup or a glass and, you know, just reusing things and thinking about how we consume and how we produce things. Um, Council's gone on and we've declared an emergency climate. We have developed a fantastic RECIF, uh, Recycling Community Investment Fund, where um, we've invested a lot of money and we work with um, Keep Northern Ireland and um, Beautiful the Live Here, Love Here project. And um, through that, we have worked with local schools in, ter in terms of delivering a community education program. We've brought in um, beach cleaning boards, which encourage people if you're visiting our beach, take a litter picker and a bag and pick as you go. And um, even if you pick up five for the sea, that's great. Five more items that aren't going to make their way into, into our waterways. We brought in the sea bin, uh, which was really again about trying to lift some of the waste that was in the harbours around our marinas. Now, it wasn't meant to um, you know, create tons of waste, but it was more like an educational tool to say, here's the type of products that we're finding in our sea. So council has done a lot in terms of, um, I suppose, our own staff, but public awareness, and then spending money and delivering grants to the community. And then I suppose encouraging community litter picks and supporting that and getting that message out there. And um, really kind of working on the educational part of it. So hugely influential in terms of the role that council can and does play. Yeah, um, and Nicholas, uh, just in terms of that there, I mean, obviously you guys are elected politicians. Um, uh, obviously public opinion does does play a role here. How engaged do you think the public are? You know, I I, I noticed, um, you know, when you were the mayor uh, of, the, of the council, Nicholas, you were doing things to green up the mayor's parlor and you were you were looking for ways to do that but in terms of you know uh, how engaged do you think the public are in terms of, of changing behaviors on single use plastic and things like that so that yeah definitely i think that the public are uh, a lot more turned on now than they they, they ever have been before on, on this issue i mean it's um you know, awareness on, on climate issues you know thanks to a whole load of variety of different campaigns and it's good to see i mean uh, I think uh, all elected representatives want to see public involved in any campaign. You, you know, that that civic engagement, and particularly on something which you can't you, you can't escape. No matter what your particular politics is, this is something that truly does affect everybody, and something that actually everybody can have some measure of involvement in and, and do something towards. It's one of those things. I suppose as an individual, you 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 know, try and maybe encourage people to put things in their recycle bins instead of you know into landfill. Uh, and it's a small impact that one household has, but you know everybody I think is a, a lot more switched on to it, and because everybody does it has a huge cumulative impact. Yeah, and Karen, you were talking there about some of the initiatives that are going on in Arts and North Downbar Council. But how important is it that councils actually, you know, make public pledges about this that we are going to do? I mean, you you were speaking there about some of the public pledges that councillors have made. I know you your council signed the plastic promise. How important are things like that to have plans to work to, to have strategies to work to, and also public declarations to get the change to happen? I think it's really important that we show leadership, and I think um, the public are really tuned in now to the environmental issues and the fact that I would suggest that we kind of lead on on some things but actually it's our constituents I know in, in my DEA I'm constantly being contacted by people saying you know it was the public who, who suggested to, to me about the, the two minute beach clean board so it's people coming to us with ideas as well saying I think we could be doing this I think we could be rolling out different initiatives so I think it's it's a two-way conversation that uh, as members that we bring forward ideas. I'm very fortunate to work with um, a very dynamic director and great officers within sustainability and environment directorate. We've got great ideas and bring initiatives to us within you know, the council group and uh, we discuss those. And likewise then, you know, we have 
members of the public who are hugely engaged about environmental issues. I mean, COP26, so all the work that's been done, our young people, all the work they've been doing in terms of their protests about climate change, whatever. I mean, I think that's really captured, you know, the mood of, of people at the minute. And, you know, we're, we're hearing that very loudly. So it's really incumbent upon us, I suppose, to make sure then that we are, are meeting that challenge and making sure that we are doing whatever we can to be leading on that within council as well. Nicholas, what about from Lisburn um, and Castle Ray? Um, were, were, I mean, how important is it uh, from your perspective that you know public declarations, plans to work to, and actually having strategies there to actually you know it, to, to to get get the ball rolling on that change? Yeah, no, it, it, it is. It, it has a, a measurable imp impact. I think you know there will always be some detractors will say, oh, you know, council, what what are you doing? You're uh, you're, you're lighting up a building for something or you know what, what's, what's the point of that but actually it, it it's part of a wider uh, action from all of us you know it, it adds to that conversation it promotes awareness and actually gets people doing things um, what, one thing that I think uh, and I can, again can only speak for Lisbon Castle A but one thing that certainly we find where we have a lot of power to actually affect change is in how we engage with you know other businesses in terms of like and anything the council needs done you, you go out to tender uh for so whether it's you know someone who's going to be you know, offering catering services in a building or you know you're having a a one-off production you know like a construction project or, or anything whenever you draft that up if you get your terms right at the start and you say actually we want you know uh, waste reduction clauses in here we want sustainability efforts you know that whoever comes in has to either you score them on it or they have to include something like that that's how you sort of affect change in 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 the business sector i suppose and when people want to offer their service to you then you say well you we want you to do xyz uh to, you know in order to, to do that and another it was sort of one example that I can think of specifically was last year when, when I was mayor, we uh, came up with a new thing. It wasn't environmental in its, its outset. It was um, you know, a mayor's innovation fund. But in our scoring matrix, we wanted to include that in people's uh, submissions that there was an environmental sustainability uh, scoring to their, their project. So it's, it's just little things like that, getting people doing things like that so that it becomes the norm. Yeah, and uh, you know, Karen. Obviously, um, there are eleven councils across Northern Ireland. None of you exist in isolation uh, from each other. And obviously, um, uh, the great thing about that is that you get lots of policy competition between councils. But also, not all councils will move at the same pace, particularly on things like dealing with single-use plastics. How important would you say it is for councils to be, you know, to the forefront to make sure that basically they are up to standard that they are making public declarations about actually you know that we're going to combat single-use plastic what, what 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 would be your advice to to them from from the arts and north down perspective well i know uh, i was privileged to join a, a recent working group where um representatives from all the councils have come together with um keeping Northern Ireland beautiful and uh, a minister from, uh, sorry, a representative from the department as well. So I know that they do come together and I think it's really important to share what initiatives have worked in particular areas so that, you know, there can be that learning and cascading of those ideas. Um, I think that's what we want to see. Um, I think, you know, I think that even in terms of economies of scale, we're such a small area that really we should be thinking about how do we commission and procure things. Um, so there's ways that we can streamline, I think, uh, the ways that we work. And there's definitely learning um, from all of the, the different councils. And, and I think sometimes whenever some of the data comes out and we see where we're ranked with other councils, some of us become a bit competitive, put my hand up to that. Just think we need to be doing better. And, you know, our constituents want us to be doing better when it comes to littering and dog filing and all sorts of things and environmental sustainability. So I think it's helpful to kind of know where we're at in terms of standards, in terms of benchmarking and then the deliverables. But I would like to see more working together around these sorts of issues, you know, um, it should be like a, a regional approach. And maybe if we can't, you know, all be um, delivering on each project, maybe a particular council leads on, on one and shares that learning and somebody else leads on another, but we share that learning together and see what works well for all of us. Brilliant. And Nicholas, same question to you. How important is it that basically that, um, you know, obviously collaboration, but also, um, you know, other issues around making sure councils are to the forefront and 
making sure that they're that they're tackling uh, uh, single use plastics. Yeah, it, it, it is exceedingly important. I mean, it, uh, I, I do you with a, a wry smile. Think it's uh, you know wh wh why why reinvent the wheel? Because you know anytime one council thinks of doing, you say, well, what are the other ten doing? And, and let's let's see if we can uh, copy their homework or or cherry pick. And, you know, and, and, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, in a sense, you know, we want to learn from each other's uh, what, what what people have found works. You know, what, let, let's emulate that. Um, I know Lisbon and Castlereagh, we, we, we have you know, done things, but one thing that we looked at other councils do that we don't is actually have a dedicated environmental sustainability officer. So we're, we're, we're working on that. You know, we, we, we look at others and say, oh, that, that they've got that. They, oh, we we yeah. should do that too. You know? So you know, that, that's, that's something that we you know, might not have considered had other councils not be doing. So we, we hope to emulate that soon. Brilliant. Fantastic. Well, look, I, we really appreciate you coming along today, both of you to give um, perspectives from two different council areas. So Councillor Nicholas Trimble from Lisburn and Castle Ray and uh, Councillor Karen Douglas from Arts and North Down. We really appreciate your time today for joining us on this episode of Talking Subs. Mm -hmm.